Okay, so you might recognize this uh, if you're keen on explorer vessels. This is Motiot Ragnar. So this started off as a multi-purpose support vessel and he wanted a vessel that could go anywhere. So in comes this vessel. Well, not this vessel. Technically it was this vessel. There was a vessel called MV Sanaborg and it was a multi-purpose support vessel for the fossil fuel industry. He decided to convert it. So instead of building something from scratch, he decided to convert. Now, you might be thinking it's less expensive to convert a vessel like this. Uh, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest, but I know, what I do know is it's very expensive to do a conversion. It's, sometimes it can be more, it's, it's, like, it's like buying a house and then, and then gutting it and doing it. Sometimes it can be more expensive than just knocking the whole thing down and building a new one, right? Well, this is no exception because one of the things that this had that the owner wanted to keep, and specifically one of the reasons he bought it was because this vessel is an ice class vessel. Now, I've made a, v a video before about ice class. I'll go into it a little bit, but I've made a video. I'll put a link wherever it goes, and you can go and watch that video. This is an ice class hull. Uh, it's a 1A hull, as far as I can tell, uh, which is depending on... Now, ice class is, is not an easy subject. There's not one class. Different countries have different classes. Different regions have different classes for different times of the year, different thickness of ice different age of ice so you might see on some uh, class uh, lists that will say first year ice in other words ice that formed that year because a meter of first year ice is not the same density as a meter of 10 year ice or 100 year ice and the rating of the hull is dependent on how thick the ice is now how do you know how thick the ice is i have no idea but you can uh, you can know by the areas that you're going into the type of ice that you're going to be going through but this vessel is a, is a 1A hull. Now in the Baltic regions, that is the second highest rating that you can have. Uh, in other regions, the polar regions, it's not so high. It's actually one of the lowest you can have. So this is not classed as an icebreaker, although it can break ice up to the, uh, zero, 0 0.6 of a meter. Uh, but you know, if you were gonna go through really, really, you know, the thick ice that you see in, in, in these pictures here, then you're going to want an icebreaker to go ahead of you. But this is this can pretty much go anywhere. To convert it into a CPL, what did they do? So as you can see from the original photo, this was basically, it was a support vessel and the rear deck had basically nothing on it. And they actually took almost all of the superstructure. They removed all of it. They only kept the original cabins and the wheelhouse and everything else is different. Everything else has changed. Now they added uh, a helicopter landing pad on the stern there and they and they raised that up and they and that gave them a lot of room for extra space underneath which wasn't there before they actually added 900 gross tons of uh, space to this vessel now during the conversion they wanted to keep the ice class so all of the changes that were made to the vessel they had to consider the ice class and they wanted to keep that ice class rating so all of the changes uh, to the superstructure and to the exterior hull, and et cetera, because they actually changed the, the outside as well. They wanted to keep that ice rating. Now there's not just the hull to consider in an ice rating. The propellers have to be reinforced uh, so they don't, if they hit ice, they don't get damaged. Um, things like the screens, uh, the, 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 the windows on the front of the bridge, they need to be able to defrost those windows which you don't have on normal vessels not to the extent of that if you go into a Baltic or Arctic region uh, door handles for instance they need to be uh, they need to not freeze in Arctic conditions so there's a lot of extra things to think about when you're thinking about an ice class vessel now obviously the owner wasn't, he's not just uh, wanting to go to those areas, but he wanted to be able to go to those areas should the mood take him. The conversion took three years. Can you imagine? That's, that's, generally, that is the amount of time it takes to build a new vessel. So, you know, he wasn't saving any time and probably not any money by doing this conversion. In fact, for the size of the vessel, 68 meters, um, it's probably, he probably ended up spending more 
than building a new one. One of the interesting things that I did read online about this vessel is that uh, Boat International described it as virtually indestructible. I'd be very careful with phrases like that because I seem to recall another ship that was classed as unsinkable. <laughs> Iceberg, right ahead! Now the vessel has four engines. It has uh, two uh, Caterpillar diesel engines and it has two water cellar pod motors as well. But it, it still is not a fast vessel. Like I said, 12, 12, knot, 12 and a half knots is the maximum speed. Cruises at 10 knots, but it has a range of 6,000 nautical miles which obviously is important if you want to go to the Antarctic or to the Arctic, right? You need to be able to get there and back and do a, a bit of exploring while, while once you're there because there's nowhere to refuel down there. Okay, so as far as toys go, it's got an impressive list of toys. It has two Castaldi uh, jet tenders. It has four jet skis. It has a three-seater submarine and it has a, a ripsaw custom EV2 amphibious vehicle. They're, they're all kept on board and they get them on and off with a massive industrial crane which sits on the stern section. Which I love the fact that uh, very often when you have cranes on, on, on super yachts, even the big cranes like uh, Bold for instance, they have like a remote control unit, you plug it in and then you wear it like a vest and you have the controls on, on it. This one has the cabin from the original um, support vessel. I think it's from the original support vessel. And it has this huge thing where the guy actually sits inside to control the crane. And I love that. I love the fact that he's kept that and it, and it has that industrial look to it. Um, so yeah, so it's got an impressive list of toys for when you get to where you're going. The three-seater submarine as well on a 68 meter plus helicopter. It has a, a big heli deck. It can take an EC-145 helicopter as well. Now, it seems, to, it seems that uh, the owner wanted it to be a commercial endeavor. The vessel is for charter. It has its own website, which I'll put a link below in, in all the normal places. You can go and have a look. I'll put some of the photographs from that website you're seeing during this video, but you can go and have a look at the, at the website. Uh, it's a cool half a million per week to charter the vessel. Uh, it has a very interesting look in, on the inside. Um, it it kind of reminds me of a cruise ship. Some of the interior reminds me of a cruise ship, which is not necessarily to say that's a bad thing, but it just it just uh, has that kind of feel to it. With the with the there's one there's one shot with a big wooden wheel in there, and I, I've just I've seen that kind of thing on cruise ships in the past. Um, but it, it certainly the, the finish, the fit and finish will be a top quality with it being Icon Yachts that did the conversion. One of the, thing, one of the interesting things is the owner, like I said, he, he very specifically went out and found this vessel. He spent three years converting it and a lot of money. And you would think that once he did that, and also the, the name of it, Ragnar, is a Norse god, I believe, which is something that he was interested in. He has a, he has a keen interest in Nordic uh, culture and stuff like that. So he, he names it Ragnar. The interior sort of matches. The, even the, the front of the hull is designed to look like one of these Norse helmets. Uh, so it's very specific to that owner. He spends all that money on it, spends three years on it, now you would think that there would be a keeper, right? Like my 911 is a keeper, right? I have no intention of ever selling that car until I get too old to drive it, I suppose. Now you would think, having spent all that time and money and effort on that vessel, you would think, no, you'll never sell that. However, strangely, it is up for sale. Uh, if you want to buy Ragnar, it is for sale for $89 million. So from a personal point of view, I, I really love this vessel. It wasn't until I got up close to it that I really appreciated it for what it is. I mean, it, it doesn't have a fairing. Like most super yachts will have this fairing on it, you know, where they put this like filler type stuff on the side and they paint it and it looks really pretty and that. This doesn't have that. It's just the, the, the steel of the hull that you can see. Painting will be the only requirement for the crew as far as uh, the fairing is usually very difficult to, to look after, ask any deckhand. This is just, uh, this would be painted like with rollers and stuff like they, they do on the cruise ships. Um, it has that uh, industrial crane that I mentioned. It has some really uh, practical looking 
boats in there as well. It just has all the tools. Uh, it looks, it still, it still maintains that industrial feel, which I love about this vessel. Uh, and it, it really does look like it can go anywhere. What do you think of Motiot Ragnar? Would you have done anything different? Why do you think he would put the yacht up for sale so soon after completion? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you like this video, please be sure to like as it helps spread the word to other viewers. Thanks for watching.